So welcome everybody to the BSDD issue 2011. Um, let's start off with the opening session and uh, then we can continue with the main content. So welcome, my name is Gabor Pali, I'm one of the organizers of this event. I organized it last year in Hungary, but this year we are going to have it here in Bratislava in Slovakia and uh, Martin is my partner. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's Martin Matuszka. And uh, let's see what we have here. So first of all, let's uh, say thank you to all of our sponsors who sponsored us in many different ways. You can see that the list is very large and we are happy with that because we have a lot of uh, people who like to have such events, events happen here. Um, and uh, of course, let's start first with what the BSD is because some people may not know. Do you know what BSD is? Please raise your hands. I mean, who knows what BSD is? Oh, quite a few. Okay. <laughs> so I have to give a short introduction. So BSD is technically the Berkeley software distribution that comes from America. This is a version of the Unix operating system developed at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, it's a special version of Unix that uh, became open source from the really beginning and it has a special license as you can see on the, the bottom of the slides uh, that uh, has a very uh, permissive license that uh, requires only a minimal uh, things that you should do with the source code that you have. So open source is technically the, so uh, the system that you have the source for. So you can uh, modify it, you can, you can recompile it, you can redistribute it. Uh, as long um, as you want, and uh, you can do many things with that. There is no res real restriction on, the, on that. The only restriction it usually has that you have to name the source that you used for, uh, for creating your stuff, but you don't have to republish the sources and things like that. And uh, these kind of systems use almost everywhere. One of the famous applications is the Mac OS X. So if you have, have a MacBook, like over there, that means you technically using a FreeBSD system, modified version of the FreeBSD. Um, but uh, BSD was the first uh, Unix that contained the TCP IP stack that we use today. So if you're using an internet, you're technically using BSD implementation, which is a very good thing, and you should know that. And uh, we have many different BSDs, so let me summarize one of the major BSDs out there and that I've uh, available these days. The first one is FreeBSD. That you could see some of the f f uh, talks connected to FreeBSD and I'm also a FreeBSD committer, but it doesn't mean that FreeBSD is the only BSD we have. It's, uh, it's technically the most popular BSD you can find, but uh, it also has a version called PCBSD optimized for desktop use. Uh, you can find CDs uh, outside. There is a guy, Daniel Soffert, who is distributing P PCBSD and FreeBSD CDs. So if you'd like to take a try, uh, but yeah, they, you can get them for free. The second type of BSDs we have here, and we have some speaker for it, the NetBSD, which is one of the first uh, open source BSDs uh, available in the internet. It runs on many platforms and you can find it in routers and different type of network appliances. So it's, it's also very uh, widely used and optimized for, for multiple architectures. And the third one is OpenBSD that focuses on uh, security and uh, fixing uh, bugs connected to security. And it has a very uh, uh, well maintained base system and many applications. So it's also uh, used in practice. And uh, we also have Dragonfly BSD, which is a fork of FreeBSD that contains the different implementations of things that you can find in your regular FreeBSD distributions, like threading and uh, optimization that uh, moving forward uh, towards the being able to run uh, BSD on a cluster. And it also has a very special file system developed in progress called Hammer that uh, competes with ZFS. <laughs> At least tries to compete with ZFS. And uh, then uh, we should uh, take a look at what day is we have here, what BSD day is. So it's technically a mixture uh, of a developer summit and a workshop. So developer summit means that we have a few developers over here. Uh, some of them are also speakers, but not everybody speaks, but developer. We invited them here to meet and discuss things. And, and have dinners together. But it's also a workshop open to everybody who would like to be familiar with BSD systems and uh, occasionally join us and uh, uh, work with us in developing such systems. 
and that's why the talk for to to advocate BSD and uh, tell something about uh, how it happens and who who, the, who are the people behind that. So the format of the sessions are quite flexible because we have different kind of talks like like uh, regular talks uh, with presentation slides, questions and things like that. But we also open to other sessions like demonstration of results. So not not about slides, but about a working product that you can see how it how it is working in practice, and you can uh, make questions about it. And the the, talk, uh, the speaker will will answer the questions. Or we can have forums and you can discuss a topic together with the developers. Or the developers can even uh, discuss the topic between themselves. And each session is about 25 to 45 minutes long, depends on the talk. You can see in the schedule which talk takes how much time. And of course, free free to ask. Uh, we are very open to questions and very, very curious about the feedback we have here. And his, here's the overview of the schedule uh, for the day. So the workshop will be here in this room, but there will be, as you can see, a BSD exam in, in one of the neighboring rooms. This BSDA exam is about a uh, low uh, um, entry level certification for using BSD systems. It's about system administration. Uh, so te technically it contains uh, questions about how to use a BSD system and how to work with BSD system in practice. And if you, you can pass the test that you will get a certificate, that means you are a certified BSD engineer, things like that. It, it's, it's still work in progress because there are other exams uh, to be worked out. So it, it's. Uh, this is the first exam that you should take as a BSD administrator. Um, there is a BSDP certification in preparation that will be equivalent to, for example, Red Hat certifications that are done that will be for a certified professional, that means a senior system administrator. And this one is for junior administrators with a target of like six months experience. Thanks. So uh, first we will have a bunch of sessions starting from quarter past nine until quarter to uh, 12. Then we will have a lunch break, then sessions again, then a break, sessions, and then a break with a cake. So everybody is welcome to join us for a cake. And there will be a large bunch of, uh, bunch of sessions. Let's see what we have here in the inside the sessions. So first we will have a, a talk on the FreeBSD 9. This is the new version of uh, FreeBSD that can be uh, found uh, outside uh, the, on the CDs that you can get for free. And there will be also a talk about uh, the ZFS. This is a file system that is used in FreeBSD and it's very popular and very very good uh, file system. And there will be a talk on enclosure management, which is a kind of a special uh, um, use of FreeBSD. And there is also a talk about kernel, kernel mode Lua. Lua is a, technically a scripting language, but recently Mark managed to squeeze it into the NetBSD kernel and we are curious how he done it. And another session is about our guests. We will have some guests during the day who will present uh, other BSDs. So the, these are the BSDs that are on their own, like Retro BSD, which is a BSD for very small embedded systems. And there will be Mesh BSD, which is BSD distribution. It's a live CD technically, but optimized for, well, for Buddhism. So you will see. Uh, and. Uh, the third sessions are about uh, FreeBSD ports and packages. So FreeBSD has a very uh, wide collection of, of stuff, applications running on top of them. So ports and packages are the system that provides the, the support for running different applications on top of it, like uh, KDA, GNOME, uh, LibreOffice, Mozilla, Firefox, <laughs> Thunderbird, things like that. And there will be another discussion followed by that uh, uh, featuring a NetBSD developer uh, about how to port software to BSD. So you will see the, the steps how to make it make a software run on a BSD system. And there will be uh, some presentation on version control with Fossil because the NetBSD project is um, pondering about whether they should switch to Fossil so they, they won't use the CVS. This is the original system they use for version control. Version control system is technically the system where they uh, store their sources. It uh, but it with log history attached, that means uh, you can find who modified what and when and why. Uh, it, but it's also a format that you can access the sources of such systems. And there will be a presentation on NetBSD's new firewall. So the, the firewall, I, I, I think that I don't have to introduce this concept to everybody. It's a very common thing, but NetBSD people started to rewrite it and would like to have a new 
iteration on firewalls. And then the, the last sessions are about automated regression testing. It's about testing the source code, its stability, so it's, it's an automatic way how to uh, be sure about that that code is still running and still passes all the tests. And there will be a presentation on Unix use as a cloud. That means how to use a Unix system as a cloud service. Clouds are very f popular these days. So you can see um, a BSD version of, of, of a cloud. And then the last talk will be about the Clang LLVM. Clang is a, is a compiler, and LLVM is a framework for compilers, which is under this BSD license. That means uh, it's, it's a very open and free um, uh, way to, to create a compiler, and the FreeBSD has started to use this, uh, this framework uh, for compiling its own sources. And yeah, that's all for now, and uh, we will continue with the talks soon. So I hope you will enjoy the event, and well, let's start soon.